grace and peace in Jesus. Okay, has this ever happened to you? You're at home. Get up, do something. You walk into a room, and you can't remember what you went in there for. They say there's one room where that never happens in the house, but you just figure that one out. Or you, or, you, or you go in the kitchen, you open the refrigerator to get something out, and what was I getting out? Or, you know, you're out somewhere and you um, can't remember where you parked a car or where you left your keys or your phone or your children. I don't know. what. Ever forgotten an appointment or a birthday or anniversary? Now, we joke about it. It's, it's you know, it's, it's funny in a way. But also, I know some of you dealing with, with loved ones or whatever with memory issues or dementia or Alzheimer's. It'd be very painful and very difficult. But it shows that we really value our ability to remember. We'd like to be able to rely on it, right? And to trust it. And we value being remembered. If you had that experience of uh, of doing something special for a friend and they find out they don't remember it at all. Or somebody made your day of remembering something you did for them, thanking you. Well, Thanksgiving is about being thankful, but it's also about a step before that, and that's remembering. Remembering what has happened, remembering the blessings received and what we have to be thankful for. Well, tonight God wants to jog our memory as he did for the Israelites as they were about to enter the promised land as we just heard Gail read from Deuteronomy. But he wants us to remember as well what he has done in the past. Remember what he's doing in the present. What he's doing right now. And as we remember to give thanks. So let's look at it. I mean, as as we celebrate Thanksgiving, we remember, right? And we 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 give thanks. We we can think back to the the blessings of the past year, for instance, and the, the good things that have happened. I don't know if you've got the tradition, many people do. We do this. You know, Thanksgiving dinner, you sit around the table and you go around the table and everybody talk about what you're thankful for. What are you thankful for? You know, maybe it's something specific that has happened recently that you're thankful for or, or just, just a blessing that you live with each day that you, you just want to acknowledge and, and be thankful for it. We did this last, you know, last week as a school staff at our last devotion um, before, before the break. What are we thankful for? this school year so far. Well, in our reading from Deuteronomy 8, Moses says to the Israelites, remember where you've been. For 40 years, God had led them and provided for them manna, clothing, protection, victory over enemies, his presence, his guidance. And, and he wants them to remember these things and give thanks. And they even have a special festival. It's not in our reading, but this is, this is elsewhere. The, uh, the festival of booths or tabernacles was kind of like the Israelites' thanksgiving in the years ahead. They would, they would make Little, little tents, little, little booths, like camping booths, and live in them for a week as a reminder, as a commemoration of that time in the wilderness and giving thanks. But it's not just the, you notice in the reading, that's not just the good stuff that God wants them to remember. Did you catch that? I'm going to read part of that again. 
verse 2 of chapter 8. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years, sounds good so far, to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out. Your feet did not swell during these 40 years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Well, this seems to be like the main thing he dwells on that he wants them to remember and be thankful for. The hard stuff, the discipline, the humbling, the testing. As the Lord led them through some really hard stuff, and he uses language here that says, yeah, some of that, yeah, I threw it right at you. A whole generation had died in the wilderness. He wanted them to remember that as well. You know, when we talk about remembering and thanksgiving, I know if you're like me, you, you do some filtering. If I'm asked to, to list what I'm thankful for, it's only going to be the good stuff, right? I remember the bad stuff, but I don't feel thankful for it. The hurts, the grief, the frustrations, the tears. I pass them by and only bring out for public consideration the good stuff. It's like you only put good food on your table. This passage, God's inviting us to have a little different way of thinking about counting our blessings. That's what he's doing in this text for the Israelites. Because he, he says he had humbled them. He had tested them. He had let them experience hardship and hunger. And he called it disciplined. And now he wanted them to remember his faithfulness through it all and give thanks. You can't help but wonder, does he still do this? You think he might be doing this in your life? In mine? What does he really want you and me to remember and be thankful for this year? Well, think of it this way. What is the blessing God most wants you to have? Big picture. What does God want you, want for your life? Is it health? Is it happiness? Success? Everybody liking you? Every day going smoothly? I mean, these things are good we pray for them. They are daily bread. For when they receive them, we give thanks. The truth is, they're not at the top of the list for God. The top blessing in God's book is faith in Jesus. And that we grow in trusting in him. His love, His presence, His grace. Just as He invited the Israelites to see His work in the hardships that He was reminding them of. This is the blessing that He wants us to be able to be thankful for, that He was with us through it all not just as a passive observer, but at work for his purposes, the growing of our faith and trust in his gracious promises. 
See, our text challenges us to go beyond the basic questions. What was good this year? When did I feel blessed? And to ask these questions, how did God call me to trust him more this year? How did he use the hard times as a context for me to walk in faith? Where was I in the valley of the shadow of death where I had to rely on his rod and staff to comfort me? Where did God let me be humbled? How did he test me? Is he done yet? Am I trusting? Am I clinging to him? There's a a Japanese art form you may have heard of called kintsugi. You put up the first picture. What is kintsugi? It's an art form that involves repairing broken pottery or china, but using gold or silver with the lacquer as you repair it. So the goal of kintsugi is not to repair something so it looks like new. Oh, no. It's to highlight the breaks instead of hiding them. And the result is a beautiful object that also contains the history of its brokenness. And the result is a new piece that is actually more exquisite than it was before it broke. God practices kintsugi. Repairing what is broken with the goal of creating something more. Blessing, deeper faith, closer walk, greater knowledge, deeper of his grace. It's Romans 8.28. Please put that up. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. God is at work in the hard stuff that you've been going through. Whether he he sent it directly or it's a result of evil in the world or just a fall of the world, regardless, he is at work seeking to achieve his purposes. And the truth is, we may not, we may not be able to see and appreciate the kintsugi that God is making of our lives until his work is complete in the resurrection. There's a frustration there. But we know he does this Because at the center of our faith is God's greatest kintsugi. Think of the cross of Christ. Jesus broken and shattered. Jesus dead and buried. But God made something beautiful. Resurrection from the dead. The shattered body made whole. But with the crack still showing... Nail wounds in his hands, the wound in his side from the spear, which for us are now signs of his unfailing love. I think that's why he kept the the wounds in the resurrection. He didn't have to. His resurrection body could have been completely whole. Ours will be. But no. God's kintsugi, see the wounds, see the side, see my love. And now the resurrected body of Jesus with nail and spear wounds is something exquisite and beautiful, and it's the source of our hope in life. And because God worked redemption for the world 
through the brokenness of his son, I can trust that he is at work through the brokenness in my life. He is at work. He's working his kintsugi art in your life and in mine. And he calls us to trust him as he works. To rely on him. The divine artist is at work. And to give thanks. Because he's at work. Because we can trust that when he is done, the kintsugi of our lives, it will be breathtaking beyond imagination. And so we count our blessings at Thanksgiving as we remember as we give thanks. This text invites us to broaden our definition of blessing. To give thanks not just for the things and the events that are obviously good, the, the, the daily bread that, that quickly comes to mind. I know when I think about things to be thankful for, what's going to come to mind is the, the birth of a new granddaughter. The times Teresa and I got to get away and be together. The time spent with family, the ministry that's gone well. All those are easy things, right? And they're real. And I give thanks. But also to give thanks for the giver of all gifts and his faithful presence and work, the one who is at work in our lives in ways we cannot fathom in the hard times. And there have been them this year. We give thanks because we trust that God is at work in all of it, providing not only the daily bread for which we receive with thanksgiving readily, but also that he's at work in ways we cannot begin to understand. We give thanks for all of this because above all, the hands from which we receive his gifts have nail wounds. So remember. Remember and receive daily bread with thanksgiving. Remember the Savior. Remember the cross. Remember the resurrection of Jesus. Remember the certain hope of our resurrection when all the beauty of God's artwork will be revealed. Remember it all and give thanks. Let's pray. Lord, this is an encouraging text in Deuteronomy, but also a challenging one because we have no reason to believe that you're not at work in the same way in our lives. When you allow hardship and difficulty and the effects of a fallen world and sometimes the effects of our own fallenness, we praise you and we thank you because we can trust that you are at work in all of it, that you are Lord of all of it, that you hold us and our days in your gracious, loving, nail-marked hands. And we trust, Lord, that when we are done and when you are done with us, there is beauty and joy and peace which you have prepared for us. And until that day, we live in your presence, your peace, and your grace, for which we give thanks. In Jesus' name, amen.